call from? Scott. Scott. Yo, dude, what's up? How old are you, Scott? I'm in 30-something, bro. You're what? 30-something. That's cool. Do you like your life? Yeah, my life's pretty cool, you know what I mean? I'm on vacation right now, so that's pretty sweet. Where are you on vacation? Uh, Rye, New Hampshire. R- R- Rye, New Hampshire? Rye Beach, New Hampshire. You're Rye on, Beach, you're, New you Hampshire. Went to, why'd you go to vacation in New Hampshire? Um, my family lives up here, and my kids have never met them, so I took them up here. Hmm. Do you, Do you like your family? No. This doesn't sound like much of a vacation. It's a vacation for my kids. My kids are happy. You know, we're from the Midwest. They've never seen the freaking beach before. So they got to see the beach. Um, but a lot of childhood trauma for me is coming back because I'm with my family and there's that whole bit. But I'll call my therapist when I get home. I'll be all right. So a lot of you say a lot of childhood trauma has uh, come to you because you've gotten back with your family. Oh, yeah. Big time. All right, so if you're, you want me to tell family, you about it? You want, it's pretty funny. Like I and I got to like, I kind of got full circle on some of it. I yeah, I kind I kind of do want to hear about it. Well, because here's what I'm curious about: is if your family was traumatic for you, are you not afraid of of getting your your children inheriting some sort of grand trauma? <laughs> yeah, actually, I realized that today in the car. <laughs> well, all right, tell me what happened. <laughs> So when I was a kid, me and all my brothers, right, like my mother's M.O. was she'd get us into the car and then pick a fight with us, right? And then when we, you know, fought back or or did whatever, basically, she'd pull over and yell at us and say, all right, get out of the car, right? So now she's like in her 60s or whatever, and um, like we're driving down the road and, you know, she's she's like basically picking a fight with me again, you know, so I got to pull over and be like, all right, mom, get out of the car. <laughs> Hell yeah. That was awesome. You, you flipped a switch on her. Dude, I flipped a script, dude. Mm. Did that but feel we're good? having fun, you know, salt, yeah, yeah, dude, felt awesome. Uh, but, you know, we're having saltwater taffy, uh, beach, it's fun. It's miserable, um, it's fun. I remember one time my uncle did the same thing to me where I was like fighting with my sister and uh, we were in his car and he, he, he pulled over on the side of the road and made me stand and, and uh, uh, get out on, there was a big rock on the side of the road, like a big boulder. <laughs> and he made me stand on, on the boulder and wait um, before we wait. Could continue. And I told him I had to pee, but he wouldn't let me, he wouldn't let me go pee. So I ended up pissing my pants all over this boulder. Jesus Christ, dude. That's, see, that's childhood trauma right there, dude. Yeah, that's why, we're, that's why, I mean, that's why I'm not going to go visit him anymore. I don't know. I see, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand your, your strategy of bringing your child back to the source. I mean, they have a really nice beach house. Like my mom is, Mm. All right, and she has a like as far as money is concerned. So she has kind of a beach house situation. So, so you're, so you're willing to forget. You're willing no, to forgive. No, neither. Never forgive. Never forget. Hold the grudge for as long as you can. But you know, if they got a beach house, unless if a beach house is involved, unless there's a beach house involved, and um, you know, like I might be having a miserable time, but it's really not about me. I mean, my kids are having a great time. They've never met their cousins before. Jesus Christ, it's been forever. They never met their cousins, but you know, now they met them and they're all having a blast together. So that's cool. Well, man, look, you're you're a, you're a good father. I always, every time I see, you know, like if I go to Disney World or a theme park or something, and I see the the miserable adults with the happy kids, yeah. I'm like, you know, props to them, yeah. props to them yeah. for sticking it out for the kids. Shout so, out to the dads. Uh, hey, dude, it's Father's Day. It's Father's. It's Father's Day weekend. You know what I'm saying? So, like, shout out to the dads, dude. Maybe your kids will give you a card with uh, money in it. Maybe that'd be sweet. Or like you know, a, a a stick of gum or something like that. At least something, dude. I mean, you know, their smiles is gift enough. You know, like I got the pictures and video of them up by the ocean. They're making memories. They'll always remember me pulling over to the side of the road and saying, "All right, mom, get out of the car." 
Don't remember that. Hopefully it won't be traumatic, but, you know, whatever. Well, hell yeah. What would you say your name was? Scott. Thank you for sharing, Scott. Yep. Have a good night, you guys. Bye. You too. Therapy Kent goes on the line, taking your phone calls every night. Therapy Kent goes to an right, he's teaching you how to live your life, but he's not really an expert. Call from Joshua. Joshua. Hello. Hey. Hey, man. How's it going? How old are you, Joshua? I'm uh, 23. You're 23. Yeah. I'm 23. Really? 23,000. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you like being 23? Um, not right now, honestly. Why not? Well, uh, I woke up from a coma about six months ago. Really? So, yeah. You um, woke up from a coma six months ago. Yeah, I was in a coma for about a year. Woke up and uh, about six months ago and just trying to figure shit out, I guess. How did you get in, into a coma? Um, so I was hunting with one of my friends and I got shot in the back of the head. And uh, that's basically what they told me happened. I don't really remember anything before the tree stand so I'm, not, I'm just going off what everyone else said you were shot in the back of the head um from what they said that bullet entry was from the back of the head um so yeah who who shot you um it was, well it's kind of crazy uh it was one of my friends. Um, I didn't know about it, honestly, for a while. Uh, everyone said it was an accident, or at least that's what I was told. Um, but about a week ago, I was playing baseball with my little brother, and I hit my head pretty hard. And a couple days ago, I was uh, like, stuff's been coming back to me a little bit. And I'm starting to think it wasn't an accident. Really? Yeah, because uh, I remember me and my friend were arguing about the hunting spot we were going to go to. And... Uh, I told him that I knew this one place that my grandpa used to take me, and he was like completely against it. And like we were arguing real bad, and like that's all I really remember. Um, before right, like, but, that, but that doesn't okay. But which hunting spot to go to doesn't sound to me like th- th- you know the 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 scale of an argument that would end in your friend shooting you in the back of the head. Yeah, but like that would be a little petty, I'd say. We've been we've been arguing for a while now, though, because uh, I've been dating his sister, and he wasn't really too happy about it. And then, like, I'm I'm pretty sure there was more intentions behind it. I just remember arguing before, you know, everything just kind of went black. Mm. So you were dating his sister. You think that that made him upset? I'm I'm thinking it because I remember he wasn't too happy about it, but like he told me and his sister he was okay with it, and but he started he's been treating me differently, like before the accident, and then he just randomly was like, "Hey, you want to go hunting?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure," and all I remember is him like him being determined on going to a specific spot, and I was like, "No." I know a different spot, and then we ended up going to where he wanted to, and then I don't really remember much after that. And, like, for a while, I didn't remember how it happened, but, like I said, I hit my head pretty bad, and uh, it's starting to come back to me, and, like, I've been hanging out with him and stuff, but, like, I'm starting What's to read What's his account of the story? What? What's his account of the story? What does he say well, happened? He, well, he says that he was trying to shoot a buck and I just like he the way he explained it is I got in the way and it was an accident but I'm starting to think it wasn't an accident because like he was in front of me last the last I remember he was in front of me so I'm trying to I've been trying to figure out for the past few days how he would manage to get behind me like I've sort of just accepted what people have been telling me 
you know, because I'm trying to get back the past six months and like catch up on everything. And like now, now that I've had some time to sit and think about it, and I, I just it doesn't sit right with me. And like he's been acting like he's like I don't know if it's just because he's happy that I'm alive or what, but he's been acting like apologetic a little bit. He's like he's always buying me well, stuff. Well, fucking yeah, he's been acting apologetic. He shot you in the back of the head. I know, but he's been like he's been buying me stuff, and like he's been like, hey, he keeps asking me like, hey, do you remember anything? Do you remember anything? <laughs> I, I would me, be apologetic always, as well. He just keeps asking me if I remember anything from that day, and like every time I tell him I don't know, he just he, he's persistent. He's like, are you sure you don't? Are you sure you don't remember? And like it, it That's like a at first. Sus. I, I, exactly because at first i was just like oh he just wants to make sure i'm okay and that like my brain's not fucked but i've noticed like the, he's been a little little weird about it and like i've slowly been giving him hints that i've known and he's been like like well, like for instance yesterday he was like hey anything come back yet and i was like yeah weren't we arguing and he kind of got a little nervous like i could tell by his voice he was like oh uh yeah, yeah, but we, we got over that. That's that's nothing. Like, he kind of blew it off pretty quick. Are, are you planning on, I mean, look, have you, like, tried to press charges against him or something like that? Well, I think I would need, like, actual proof that he, like, it was intentional and stuff for me to do something like that. I don't think I could just be like, hey, I think it was on purpose. Cause well, let me ask my, you like, another thing. Okay, so you 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 sort of you think that this might have been on purpose. Who else have you talked to about this? Um, nobody so far. Like I told really? my mom. You haven't talked to like a lawyer or. Well, I've talked a to my mom. CSI about it. motherfucker or something like that. Well, I've talked to my mom about it like a little bit. I told her I was like, "Hey, I'm starting to remember a little bit more," and she's been asking me about it, and I've been telling her a little bit. And all she's like, and she seems like she's been telling me to just like not tell nobody and to just wait for her to figure it out. And she'll and she'll let me know, you know, what 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 we should do about it, because like she she has a lot of money. You know, my, my family's kind of wealthy, I guess you can say. So, like, I don't know if she's contacting like lawyers or a private investigator or what's going on, but like. I'm, I'm not really sure if I want to tell people yet because everyone's been treating me like, like, I don't, I don't know different. How long, you were in the coma for, you said, what, six months? Yeah. And well, what, oh, do you, what do you do, what do you do now? Um, nothing really. I've been, uh, I've been going to a lot of therapies still. Um, and do you, I mean, do you talk about this in therapy? Uh, not really, because I just feel like the, I don't want to blow anything out of proportion, because if I'm wrong, then I'm falsely accusing a good friend of mine. Like, I understand friends argue, and that could just be, like, us arguing a little bit, but I don't want to, like... Uh, now, I'm curious, but I'm curious, though, so why, why are you, you know, if, I, if, if I'm hearing correctly, the only people you've told are me, an internet gecko... Uh, who is a random guy and your mom, why would you not tell a therapist or if, if your family can afford it, a, a, a lawyer? Because these are legitimate things. If you think, let me tell you, if you genuinely think that your friend intentionally shot you in the head, you should tell this therapist who I, I assume you're talking to uh, to help you recover from the coma. You should tell a lawyer, because they'll know. I mean, I don't know if they will, but they might know how to approach this situation. You should, you should, you should tell someone if you have a suspicion that your friend shot you, you know? Yeah, but I just, I feel like if I do, and then it turns out that it was an accident then I'm losing my friend because I don't think, like, he would want to be friends with me after I accused him of something like that. You know what? I think, I, I you know what? Your friend, well, either, it, or, your friend shot you in the back of the head, you know? Uh, it, yeah. Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, you know, I would be nervous that my friend wouldn't want to be friends with him 
would want to be friends with me after I did that. So, you know, I think that there's there's a little bit of, of, of even ground to be made here. Um, it's worth talking about to someone. Legitimate, I think. Yeah, I probably should talk to somebody about it. Will you do that? Will you do that? Will you talk to your therapist and say, hey, I think that my friend shot me in the back of the face. And, you know, I I, I don't know. This might be, you know, a, a, a thing I could talk about in therapy. You know, something I, I, I personally think that's a legitimate thing to talk about in therapy is uh, your, your friend is shooting you in the head in the middle of the woods. Yeah, I just I just concerned because like we've been friends since kindergarten and our families are really close. So. Like, I'm not trying to ruin everything over just, like, a, 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 a thought or, like, a, a, a conclusion that I've come to. Because it could just be, like, me piecing stuff together still without the complete story, you know? Sure. And, and I get that. But that's why I think you should piece. I mean, you don't have to go straight to your friend and accuse him. But you should talk it out with someone. Well, that's why I call you. <laughs> well, you should talk. I mean, you should talk it out with a professional. I don't know anything about how the brain works. But listen, what did you say your name was? Uh, Joshua. Joshua, look, Joshua. If uh, look, I'll leave you with this. D- get a different hobby. What? Get get next. Here, here, here's here will be my actual. Get a hobby that doesn't involve guns if you can. You you said you were wealthy. Play croquet. Do any other rich guy sport. Get into golf. You know? any do, Anything that doesn't involve guns, I'm pro you doing. Do croquet. Right. Do fucking, um, what's the thing? Racquetball. Get a new hobby that, that, that won't involve you getting shot in the head. That'll, that'll be my final advice to you. Go, talk to your therapist about how you think your friend might have tried to kill you. And then uh, learn how to play golf. All right. Um, before we do go, I just want to say that uh, thank you for all the content you make. Uh, going to physical therapy and watching your podcasts and everything has really helped me kind of keep sane. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. All right. Bye. You have a good night, man. You too. Call from Mason. Mason. Oh, Jack. Hello, Mason. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Why are you good? Uh, I didn't expect to be here. I didn't expect you to be here either. Really? Really. Who are you expecting? Uh, uh, I wasn't expecting anyone in particular, but I, I'll tell you I was not expecting you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. How old are you, Mason? I'm 18. You're 18. Yeah, nineteen in a month, a little less, fifteen days ish. I'm excited. Uh, what are you What are you doing for your birthday? Uh, waking up. Um, uh, maybe taking a shower. Don't know. <laughs> Think about it when I get there. Nothing special. The nineteenth birthday is not particularly special. Yeah. I mean, it's the last year of your teens. Yeah, um, that's kind of weird. Is it where are you? Are you? Do you feel old? No, not yet. I think once you're like past twenty-two, I feel like that's probably when stuff starts setting in. Like, wow, my childhood is like genuinely over. Like, like there's nothing left of it. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's weird though because you know childhood is nice. But I look at it with rose-colored glasses. Uh, there's a lot of things about being a kid that suck. Right, but what what about being a child sucks? Uh, everyone tells you what to do. You have no agency over your life. You're you're. I mean, if you're like eight, like you I don't know. You have you're just uncomfortable all the time. You don't know who you are. Right. Okay. Um. You're, you feel a lot more vulnerable to the opinions of other people because you haven't had time to form your own opinions. I feel uh, like at the age of eight, it's not like you don't know what opinions are yet. 
Well, no, I mean, you, I'm just talking about younger, you know, I'm like, you know, 15 okay, right. or 14 okay. or whatever. Yeah, yeah I understand When I was that. fucking 13, I was, I was nervous as shit all right. the time. When I was in sixth grade, I was like, I, I, I didn't want to draw any attention to myself whatsoever. Right. And now that I'm, you know, 47, um, you know, I'm a gecko on the computer. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's the life to be living. If I'm being honest, I mean, do you, you you obviously like doing this enough to do it three times a week? Or, sometimes, you know? sometimes. Um, well, tonight's been a good night. Tonight I'm feeling good. I was just saying this that some nights, some nights fucking suck. Yeah, honest, yeah. I wouldn't lie I mean, about that. I doubt it's the easiest job, and I bet you get a lot of shit for it. But I feel like it's probably a good job once you have nights like these. I don't know which one outweighs the other more, but it's 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 nice when we have good nights, and and it only sucks when we go for a while without having uh, good nights. But uh, tonight's been a good night. I like this conversation. This you feels do? like a, a good back and forth here. I feel like I'm yeah. learning about you. You're learning about me. You I know? like learning about you, Gek. That's very sweet. But I I have this thing where you know I, don't, I you've tricked me a little bit okay. into talking too much. Because I, I have this philosophy. I already know everything about myself. Not 100% true, but I know more about my. I know way more about myself than I do about you. So I, I you know, curious okay. about you. You're 19. Are you in mm -hmm. college? I'm taking a summer class right now. Uh, I actually had a, a unintentional gap year. So An unintentional gap year. What does that look like? Uh, so I was going to go... Uh, into the Navy, you know. So I left uh, for basic, and we had to quarantine for two weeks. And then uh, 38 out of, like, 40 people in my building got COVID, so we all had to stay there for another two weeks. So we were quarantined for a month. Um, after that, I went to boot camp for two weeks, and uh, a lot of us, just from like a month of inactivity couldn't really complete the physical tasks that we could when we started i guess i don't know how to explain that um i mean i got i got lucky um only having the quarantine for a month when i was in seps the guy uh there were guys there that had been there since july of last year and i i was there in february so they'd been there so for almost seven months your ultimate goal, you want to join the Navy? No, not anymore. No, I'm just going to college. I'm going to get a business degree, uh, probably like a marketing major, and then I want to work uh, in real estate. In, you want to work in real estate? Yeah, in Texas. Interesting. Like selling it, you want to be an agent, you want to own yeah, your yeah, yeah. thing? Yeah. That's a good business from what I've heard about it. You can probably make a lot of money. You can probably work for yourself. Right. It's a good gig. Intr what, what, now, let me ask you, what drives you? Is it money? You want to have a lot of money? You want to have the, um, uh, agency over uh, yourself? Eventually. I just don't want a very repetitive job. You know, I want something where I could wake up every morning and have a different experience and not feel like I wake up every morning just slaving my life away to a job that I don't enjoy, you know? Can I ask, and I don't know, you actually, you probably know more about fucking real estate than I do. Uh, what makes selling real estate, in your opinion, a not repetitive job? Because I would think uh, it sort of is. You, you know, you wake up every day, you sell houses. Well, that, but... Real estate is like, it's not a repetitive thing in, in terms of how often you have to do it. You could sell, if you're your own business, right? And yes. you sell three houses a year, you're already making more than what the average household income is for in the United States. Really? And all, for only fucking three houses? Yeah. Yeah. If, if That's, that's if you do work under yourself. If you that's work under other people, then, I mean, sometimes they'll give you like a commission bonus, but not always. But, I mean, See, either way, it's still decent money. So. I like the idea that you fucking sell three houses a year and then you fuck off to, like, 
shine. I'm not whatever. saying that I'm just going to fuck off, right? I'm Like, obviously, I'm going to keep putting in work. And those things are like, they're still year-long projects where you're going to have to buy, like, a rundown, a shitty rundown piece of, like, a lot, right? And then you fix it up, and then you're going to sell it for almost double what you paid for. And that's what you're hoping yeah. for, is that you get more in your return, so. <clears throat> right. Um... Well, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you, 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 when you fix it up, you should, uh, add some flair to the houses, man. If that's the thing, if you really wanna, if you really wanna make this a creative job, you gotta be a special type of realtor person, alright? You gotta be, like, taking, um, you know, houses in suburban neighborhoods and making them into arcades and shit. Right, you know? right. You gotta add Pac-Man wallpaper and, uh... I don't know, just get really fucky with it, you know, make the turn, add a, add a mirror room where all the walls are mirrors, something okay. like that. I don't know, right. like, do, do, get creative with the housing part of right. it. That's just a way to, 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 um, you know, add some, some flair to it. Right. Piss and shit all over the walls and go, this is a piss and shit house. Okay, okay, so... Yeah, I I think that one would work, honestly. A kid died in here. Yeah. I mean, I think probably places with a little bit of history behind them, you know? Absolutely, exactly. You're making a angle. property. You're making, right. you're, 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 you have to be creative in your storytelling. Because you're not gonna, always... compel you. You can't get a piss and shit house anywhere off the street. That's a... That's my specialty right there, you know? Look, what did you say your name was? Mason. Mason, I like your yes and mentality. I like your creativity. I, I, I you know, I, I'd buy a house. I'd buy a house from you if, uh, if, if I could afford one in, um, in, in the air. In, uh, you know, if, if I could afford a piss and shit house, they probably run for millions of dollars. But if, if, if you know, the market crashes, I'll be hitting you up. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for calling, man. You have a good rest of the night. Yeah, you too, Gex. See ya. Call from Hayden. Hayden! Wait, oh shit, I'm actually on? You're on the thing, dude. Oh, nice. What's up? <laughs> Wait, hello? Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Oh. Yeah, your, uh... Your thing said, like, do you know anyone? I called in oh, I because, uh... About that. I actually don't know anyone. You don't know anyone? Yeah, I don't even know like a like a single person, dude. You know me. I mean, I guess that's true. Like I know who you are, but like I don't I don't like know you, you know. But the, I mean, but you know who I am. Well, I mean, in, in that sense, I know like who a lot of people are, right? Okay. Well, I, well, I I don't think it's I don't think it's possible for you to not know anyone. Not really like I, I don't know anyone at all. I, uh, yes, I'm an orphan. I just, I just grew up. I didn't have any parents or parental figures. I, uh, I work like a, like a night security job. It's just me. I don't see anyone. I drive home. N no one but me here. I don't think I've actually spoken to another person face to face for like, uh, Probably about like two years. Really? Yeah. Are you? So you grew up with no. I mean, where did you grow up? Like, what was your life like when you were ten? I just. I I just like. There wasn't no, I just like started, you know. Like that's it. No school or anything. Just. I, I where did up. you when okay it te, when you were 10 years old and the yeah when i was 10 down, yeah i was um, i was uh i was working security like i said yeah w where do you sleep in my bed okay where's your i have, I have like a bed? i have a it's like in a, no, no 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 when you were 10 years old like where did you sleep yeah. at night well like i said like in my bed you know like i have like a i've got i've got like a like a bed at a place i sleep at it Who own? Who pays for the place to exist? I don't have to pay for it. It's just I can just sleep there. 
There's no one who, around. Like no who one operates cares. the facility, Hayden? I do. I'm the. It's my bed, you know. All right, Hayden. Yeah. We're gonna. We're. we're I, we can either talk like we, like you know two people having a conversation where they speak words, or I'll hang up. Right. Okay. I, I understand. I don't pay rent. If that's what you're asking. So what? What is this place? It's just the bed. It's not like a place. Like it's just like the bed. Like on like the, like outside. You know, in the woods. Do you know? Just the bed. Hey, Hayden. Yes. Hayden, who are you, Hayden? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm Hayden, Hayden. I need a com. Hayden, Hayden, I'm. I, I want to move on so fast. I need a conversation with a human being right now about things. That makes um, sense to me in my head. I know. I'm. I'm sorry. I really tried, but like, this is actually my first conversation with a human being, and like, I mean, I said it was like two years, right? Probably. Okay, probably around two, two. Tell me about two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. I remember it actually pretty clearly. Tell me. Yeah, the, uh, the last person I had a conversation with. I. Uh, Who was it? I. Uh, I ran out of toilet paper, so I went to the store to get some. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was the dude at the. Uh, the cash register you know he was like that's a lot of toilet paper and i was like too nervous to say anything mm -hmm. wait hello i think my my phone hello no i'm here i'm here oh <laughs> so okay so you went to get toilet paper yeah um, i got like a lot though so okay are you like a legit, you're like a legitimate, like agoraphobic? I don't know what that means. Like, like I'm like afraid of something. Like, I know, the phobic part, I know that. What is an agor? Like, you know, like be afraid to leave the house. Oh, well, I mean... I don't have a house, though. You don't have a house? No, like I said, it's, like, in the woods. You sleep in a bed in the middle of the woods? Yeah. And what's that like? I mean... It's it's kind of, like... It's, it's kind of chill. But I guess it could be kind of lonely. Is there a, a house over the woods, or it is a bed in the middle of the woods with nothing yeah, no, else covering it? It's it's in the woods. I mean, there's like woods around, so it's kind of like hidden from like view from outside of the woods. You know what I mean? Is there, is, is there are there four walls surrounding the bed? No. What? Where are you right now? In the woods. Really. Yeah. How do you charge your phone? Uh, I have a, I have solar panels, you know. It's nighttime. Well, I mean, it charges during the day, and I can use it at night. Can you yell as loud as you possibly can for me? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want like some. I've. You don't. Want I don't want to alert anyone to my presence in the woods, you know. There's no one around. They're in the middle of the woods. I mean, it's... I, you, we say, like, in the middle. I mean... <laughs> it's... I may, be, I may be towards the edge of the woods. I right, may so have, you don't live... You live on the edge of the woods. Yeah, I may not have been totally honest, right? It, it's, it's oh, towards really? The you edge haven't of the been woods. totally honest with me? Well, I'm now I'm being totally honest. <laughs> I don't think you are, Hayden. What do you mean? Hayden? I have advice I was just... you. Yes. You take your bed from the middle of the woods. And you said you yeah. work at the night shop, right? Yeah. They they do they pay you money to do this job? Yeah, they just yeah. They should you should take some of that money, rent uh, an apartment or a house. And put hmm. the bed in that house and then sleep there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Why? I'm not here to judge you and how you live, but I, I want you to stay open to the possibility that that might be a happier existence for you than the one you currently live. Hmm. I mean... I mean, I, I don't know. It's, I feel like I'm doing all right. I think you are, too. Thank you so much for calling, Hayden. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me on, dude. Have a good rest of the night. You too. Call from Jen. Jen. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You seem you seem very excited. Oh my god! I've been trying to call in for like a year. Uh, real? Do you are do you legit? Do you mean that like a year? Yeah, since like whenever you started. Started about a year ago. What's your yeah. What's your name in chat? Am I allowed to? Are you allowed to say? Um, no. I don't know. My husband's the one who's always in the chat, and I just call. What's what can I What can I know? What he his name is? I'm curious. I don't know. You could ask him. Have I spoken to your husband? No, this is the first time for both. Me and my husband here. I'll give you to him. He's probably really? so like... legit. So really, so you, so you, uh, well, here, let's, uh, well, so you, how have you been trying to call in for a year? You haven't gotten in after calling in for a year. I feel like after a year. Yeah. Well, I usually like will give up after a while. Yeah. I'll just be like, fine, fuck it. I'll just go to sleep. Well, Jen, I mean, tell me everything. Tell me nothing. Well, I don't know. It's just you, me. It's my just husband. you? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you something. You've been watching this for a year. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you, when you, what do you like about the callers when you, when you like the callers? Some of them have very interesting stories and I'm not going to be one of them. Like the guy who's like living on a cot in the middle of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, I, I, I don't, I don't know what my own personal theory is about that one. He's probably full of shit. <laughs> but he, but even if he is full of shit, it's like, well, what's the, what's the real story here? Because right, w is he actually agoraphobic? Like, is he just fucking with? Because when people are like legit fucking with me, I, they don't. There was something about that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of it. Right. It's like, are they in the witness protection program? Like, who are they hiding from? Why do they may have to make up these obscure stories? It's weird. Because I almost feel like if someone's fucking with me, if someone's like just there to fuck with me, they'll I, they would make something outlandish. I feel that wasn't well, out, that, that was wasn't outlandish and, and crazy enough. For me to be like, all right, this person's just going, you know, making shit up. Yeah, I just usually at night, like my creativity level is just not there to be coming up with this outlandish, insane stuff. So apologies to everybody. I'm no, just, you don't have to. Well, you don't have to apologize yeah. at all. You have nothing to be sorry for. And I mean, I don't know. Have you killed anyone? Have you murdered a person? I have not murdered a person. What would it take to get you to murder a person? Jesus. Anonymity for number one and a shit ton of money. That's it? Yeah, that's it? Is <laughs> if someone paid you enough and you knew you to get away with it? That was not the answer I was yes. expecting. <laughs> yes. I was expecting a more noble sort of answer of like they would have to no. you know, come across <laughs> my child or whatever the fuck. Nope. <laughs> How much money? Would it take realistically? I mean, I guess it's not as black and white as that. I guess when we start talking these details, it's like, well, who am I killing? What kind of person are they? Do they deserve it? Sort of thing. So if they like really deserve it, like Harvey Weinstein, then like shit, like give me like 10 grand, I'll be good. But if it's like really? a mom, yeah, if it's like a mom, like somebody who's living a good life, like, I would probably feel 
terrible for the rest of my life if I did it. So we're talking you, like you, millions now. Do you support capital punishment? Well, I don't support the death penalty. I feel like people can be rehabilitated. But capital punishment. Like the death penalty. Yeah, do you support one. the death penalty? No. Wait, okay, so hold on. So But that doesn't make sense because if you like if you believe that no one should like like okay, if you believe that like a judge shouldn't be able to in their judgment say that this person has done so horribly that they deserve to die. Like how so but how why cuz that's my thing cuz I couldn't do I don't think I, could, I even if they were a really bad person. I don't know if I could be like this person deserves to die. I, I I don't know if I could make that decision that I think this person deserves to die. Well, I mean, I think that like once we start talking about like legality and like interpreting law is to say that yes, this person did something so egregious that they should no longer walk this earth. I think that I mean, we're talking about two different things here. Like Number one, we're talking about like, me just well, like, like killing are, someone like for not. money. I feel like, like the, we're talking about if someone does something so terrible, do they deserve to die? Well, that's true. I mean, yeah, you're you're asking me like, how much money would I take for it? And yeah, I guess in my like in my personal judgmental mind, like yes, I could like say yes or no, like just based off my own like. But as long as I would be anonymous for it, fine. Yes, yeah, sure. But if we're talking like a judge interpreting laws to say like, yes, this person should die, they're a serial killer, child rapist thing, then I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like maybe not that specific example, but people should be given the opportunity to rehabilitate. And I also feel like if the victim had something to say about it, they would probably not want that person to get off so scot-free with death. They would want them to like rot in a cellar. Or like in a cell for the rest of their life. So, so I don't 10 know. grand. Well, how yeah. Kill, like, how, like, all right, wait, hold on. Here's okay. How much to kill like just like a guy who like works in an office and he's like not that cool, but he's he didn't like kill anyone or anything. Like how much for that guy? <laughs> Are you talking about a coworker? <laughs> no, just you know, just some random guy. Oh, I mean, do you know a, a coworker? Oh my god! I know to, a lot not, of not, not that doesn't deserve. Would, or do you have any coworkers that you would kill for a certain amount of money? Is what I'm asking. I think. Oh my god, <laughs> probably. But like, but like for like a lot of money. All right. How much? How much money to kill your the your receptionist? <laughs> Jesus. Um, like a couple million. Really. Yeah. That's fucked up. Isn't it? This is what COVID has done to all of us. We just don't give a shit anymore. That's fucked up, man. I know. You I'm kill, sorry. You kill your coworker for $2 million. It's <laughs> fucked up. So anyway. Um, what, you wouldn't? You wouldn't kill anyone? I mean, for money? For like $2 million? Do you have no, positions? I wouldn't kill anyone for $2 million. How did we get here? I'm really not like a violent person. I've well, for the right price, you are. <laughs> yes. Um, My husband's left the room. He thinks I'm gonna kill him now. He, how, how much? Well, how much for that? <laughs> oh my god! No, I I couldn't. I couldn't. That's um, like. Well, that's good. To, that's good to know. Um, yes. What's your husband's name in chat? Do you really not know? I honestly, like, I could give you, I could give him to you. He wants to know your name in chat. Anonymous. <laughs> he says anonymous. He's anonymous? <laughs> Apparently. Well, I'm glad, well, tell, I'm, I appreciate you guys uh, uh, being here for a year. That means a lot to me. Well, thanks. This is just, uh, I mean, you're the only geck on the internet that gives fake therapy to anyone so clearly it hasn't worked for me well, well what the fake therapy <laughs> yeah. well it's work. i think well i mean how would you even define this as working you know well i mean we're talking about 
I mean, like, I would think that I'm a fairly normal person with nonviolent tendencies. Like, I'm a nice person. Like, I've got a good profession. I help people. But for some reason, but for we the right price, to... you would abandon all of that. <laughs> yeah. Mer- I don't know. A co worker in the face. Yeah, the receptionist. Do you not like her, or you just like. I mean, what would you do with $2 million? Oh, my God. I'd like, well, number one, I'd pay off my student loans. Like, that's for sure. Oh, okay. All right. You didn't mention you have student loans. Now I kind of get it. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like I'm indebted to not only several banks, but to the government still for quite some time. So um, I'd like to break the chains of indentureship. Oh, shit. I got to give a quick shout out to Sc- Skylius for this for this raid. Nice. He's a good hero. He's a good guy. Um, nice work. Actually, I don't know why I said that. He might not be a good guy. He raided he, me, but but I, I I can't say for certain that he's a good guy just because he raided me. I don't know anything about him. I think it's dangerous of me to have said that that he's a good guy because he, he might be a terrible person. He could be. He's probably trying to buy your favor. Him, I you know what? Him, I would kill for two million dollars. <laughs> Same. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, Jen. Thank you so it's much for, for being here. Um, yeah, no problem. You have a good night. I'll, I'll talk to you next yeah, year. You yes, next year. Ooh. All right, bye. Call from Jam and Sam. Hello? Hello. Did, did I get in? Get into what? The chat. Like, the chat with am me. I yes, you are in am I a to chat the with me currently. You are currently engaged in a conversation with me over the phone. Hello. How are you? What's your name? It went quiet. Do I still it have you quiet. on the line? Hello. Hello. This is so weird. What's your name? But this is. So- Sam, Samantha. Sam, Sam. There's no Sam. Listen, Sam. I, 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 I need you to know, and I'm not saying this to be harsh to you or anything like that. But I, I'm only saying this because there's no time to evaluate the situation that that you're in right now. There is only time to be in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I, Tell me, I'm Sam. I'm kind of weirded out by it. Did you say your name was Sam? Yes. Sam, no time to think about how you feel. Only time to feel it, Sam. Have how do you know that you are not dead? See, I don't really know. Like, are we actually dead or are we alive? Like, mm. I I feel things. I feel my pulse. I feel my cat beside me right now. Like, mm-hmm. but then again, could she be a ghost too? Mm. Right? Mm. Like, we could both be ghosts, just living in the ghost land of. Earth, I don't know. Or are we in another like parallel universe that we don't know mm-hmm. of? Sam, I get the sense from you that uh, you you maybe you know, and I get this too. I get this too. Think think a lot about your surroundings, about who you are, about uh, what you're currently feeling. You know, yeah. you're in your head, Sam. But um, yeah. look, I, I, I implore you, and I'm only telling you this because I'm telling myself this as well, to b- b- be in the world more than you're thinking about your place in it, Sam. Are we in an, a simulation right now? We might be. I actually think if we were, though, it wouldn't matter. The whole – the question – if, if I had to give my personal answer to this question, are we in a simulation? I'd say it doesn't really matter, right? Think about this. You woke up True. tomorrow morning on CNN, on all the news places, everywhere on Twitter. Everything was life is confirmed to be a simulation. What would you do? Would it just be part? I think I think it would just blend into the news cycle. Oh, yeah. Life's a simulation. I still got to go yeah. to work. I still got to feed my dog the, the freaking simulated pixel food. You know, I, we still got to do things. We still got to live right? life, simulation or not. Oh, God. Your father, your dad's still your dad. Start. Your cousin's still your cousin. The simulation <laughs> doesn't matter. We still would do the things that we have to do. You can't just not go to school just because it's not real. 
Or maybe you can. But what if? But what if you don't want to anymore? Like, what if you just want to skip out and like go to a different country or I don't know, eat pasta every day for the rest of your life, see what happens, right? Sam, it sounds like, like you've you've. It sounds like you've defined the goal for your life. It sounds like you've defined I mean, the thing that you would like to do. That is my goal in life: is to just eat all of the happiest pasta in the world and love pasta. What's your favorite pasta? Sam, I wish you the best of luck in uh, achieving that goal, and I'll be rooting Thank for you. you all the way. And by Thank the you. way, you, I just guys. want you to know. I want you to know. People are going to tell you that you're pronouncing pasta wrong, but who are they to be the authority <laughs> on anything that takes place in your version of reality? Never they forget can't that, fight Sam. Me. You Never. have a good rest of your night. <laughs> you too. Love you, Gek. Call from... Wayne. Hello? Hey. How's it going, Gek? How do oh. you know you're not dead? Hmm. So I was thinking that it doesn't matter because if it's true that we are dead and there's other existences, then they would be relative to the existence that they're in. So if we are dead now, but we can witness babies being born, old people dying, young people dying too early then this is it, you know, it's all relative. So if we're dead now, well, this is our dead life. And so to me, that's why the question, not to say your question doesn't matter, but if someone's actually worried about that, then just know it's relative and enjoy this death, life, whatever they might think it is, simulation. How do you like to enjoy the simulation, the death life? What do you do? <laughs> I don't think it's true, but um, how do I enjoy it? I just, I hang out with my wife. Um, and that's about all I do now. I just moved how did you meet your to wife? a place um, without any friends. But... Um, Met her in college. What class? At the library, actually. Uh, studying for. Do you remember the first thing class. you said to her when you saw her in the library? First thing I said to her. Yes. Probably just hi. You know, she. I remember she uh, talked to me. I think first. We were sitting down and there was, uh, I was sitting down first, there was an empty seat and then another guy. And so she sat down right between us and started talking to him first. But when he mm -hmm. got up, then I started talking to her. I don't remember the first words, but that's how it, how it went and wow. um, how the conversation started. How do you feel, do you feel bad that you were the second guy that she talked to like the guy she was having a pretty good conversation with the first guy and then he got up to leave and you were sort of like a second place conversation or is that i wasn't thinking that now I'll, I'll i'll tell her like i'll tease her about that like what was going on you were flirting with that guy before me but she didn't know who i was so i don't really care let um, me ask you one final question yeah do you believe when you look back how old are you 27 through 27 all the great things that have happened to you in your life how many of them what percentage of them did you initiate versus they happened upon you such as your wife talking to you first I feel like most a lot of great things are from me initiating because at the end of the day I asked for her number when she left the table. Yes. Um, and other things, but you know. Um, yes, yes, um, you're getting the you get the pitch, balance. right? You 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 you're lucky enough to have ran into many pitches. Very lucky. But yeah, and at the end of the day, you're the one hitting them out of the park. I like that for you. What did you say your name was? Blaine. 
I love you, Lane. You have a good rest of the night. Hey, you too, man. Later. A kid named Lane bullied me in high school, actually. And now he follows me on Instagram. And I post clips of this stream and he likes them. So, I guess, I guess we're cool now. Call from... Rico. Rico! Oh my god! I was eating a sandwich and you answered. Wow. What kind of sandwich? Uh, it's a sandwich from Jersey Mike's. It's got provolone, uh, roast beef, turkey, and bacon. Mm, that sounds delicious. Oh, it is. It is. That's how I normal life. Finish, do you want me to let you finish eating the sandwich before we move on? Uh, I just spit it out. It's cool. You spit it out? Yeah. Listen, I would have let you finish. Listen, man, I would have let you finish that one bite. You know, just a little bit. Out. It was just bread at that point. When you say but. it's just bread, I feel like bread is an integral part of the sandwich, and the bread, you would have wanted the bread to be the part of the bite. Yeah. Yeah. I How do you know excited. you're not dead? Um. Pain? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't choose to be in pain. I don't think anybody would. Physical like pain? Like those memes. Um, sometimes. I kind of have like a... Eh, both. I mean, every way you deal it, something happens. Hmm. But yeah. What's the most recent pain. painful experience you had? Um... It's weird. It's It was a painful experience, but like good to some people sure uh my dad looked at me and wanted to be me for a second i was just like fuck you <laughs> you said he wanted to be you yeah like he looked at me like i'd always wanted to look at me like as a kid but he like hated me and like he looked at me and he just smiled and he's just like don't cut your hair and i was like in my head just like fuck you <laughs> Hmm. But yeah. Why was it painful that your dad was envious of you? Uh, just yeah, like I said, he just like as a kid, he just wanted to uh, live vicariously through me. But um, kind of figured that out as an adult. But uh, it's all cool now. Hmm. Because do you feel like because he wanted to live vicariously through you, he tried to dictate a lot of your actions? Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm an adult and, like, you can't, you know, really do shit, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's my life. Right. Uh, you know, it's funny because you said that you view this as a painful experience, but that you, you even said yourself that others might not view it that way. Yeah. Because, you know, when I think of it, I think of it like, you know, how old are you? 29. 29. Your father's envious of your youth. You know, he knows that you have something valuable. Right? Yeah. So even though, you know, it's caused you a lot of pain to have to take his direction, I feel like this experience, it could help you even maybe realize the, the, the valuable thing you have, you know, your youth. Get inspired oh, yeah. by that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be youthful until the day I die. Like I'm gonna be that old man, like you know, doing crazy shit, smoking weed, having fun, I like making that. jokes. I like that. Youth is eternal. I like that. Stay young, my friend. Thank you. Stay sticky. Have a good night. Thank. You. Bye. Call from Jose. Jose. Hello. Do you like when people say your name? Does it give you a small hit of dopamine? No. No. Why not? You can call me anything. My name Jose, is am I on speakerphone right now? Yes. Would you mind taking me take off speakerphone? It's a little bit hard to hear you. Is that better? Much better. Because, um, you know, some people... And I've heard this. I've heard this. I talked about this the other night. I've heard this. It's all over the internet. People saying things. People saying, I don't want to be perceived. Have you heard this? Yes. 
where do you lie on the spectrum of I don't want to be perceived to I enjoy copious amounts of attention? I don't really think about my own perception. But really? I did at one time used to enjoy copious amounts of attention. Hmm. And what happened to change that? I started living in the world more. Mm. Tell me about the time period that you enjoyed receiving copious amounts of attention. What were you receiving? What were you receiving copious amounts of attention for? Being five or six years old. Mm. You know, you can fart and someone would be happy with you. What else would you do for attention? Would you act up? Would you bite other children? Would you break things? <laughs> no. I didn't have fun like that. Mm. Okay. So about how old were you when you stopped having such a strong desire for attention? 18. 18? Yeah. Okay, so when you were in high school, were, were you... Uh, uh, well, I was out of high school. Then. I dropped out. You dropped out. But but when you were 16, you know, a young adult, mm. a much different situation yeah. than being a farting five-year-old, would you do right. things for attention? No, because a 16-year-old farting isn't cute. No, I don't mean the, I don't mean would you do those specific things for attention no. that you did when you were five. I mean, would you in general do things for attention? Yes, I would. What would you do? Make fun of my friends. Make fun of teachers. Mm -hmm. Act up. Mm -hmm. You know what's so weird about being in school is that bull is that, and this is a this is true. I'm actually remembering this now because I haven't thought about it in a while. But it's weird in high school and middle school. Bullying other kids with other kids brings the kid that you're bullying the other kids with he brings you guys closer together. Like if you and another person make fun of a kid together, it brings you and that other person a little bit closer. You know, it's funny. You even brought those kids that we made fun of together with us. S sometimes, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, I was mostly making fun of my friends. I didn't care what other people were doing. Sure. It was no, mostly it's, no, my when friends. I, oh, no, if, no, if I, like like, kid, I, no, if I, I remember it. in middle school, if you hated someone and someone else hated someone, you would form an alliance over your mutual <laughs> hatred of the person. I'm not talking about a lighthearted rhythm here. I'm talking about, you know, making kids not want to come to school. Oh, geez. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's heartbreaking that part mm -hmm. so you'd make fun of teachers you'd make fun of kids I'd make fun of teachers all the time really do you think it made them like you <laughs> do you think it do you think the fact that you made fun of them you didn't default to giving them your respect made them try even harder to earn it there were a few I bet you know at that age you don't really give a shit though because you're just a shithead kid yeah Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to really curse on this. You can say whatever you want on here within reason. Okay. How old are you now? 33. 33. And are you comfortable with the amount of ascension that you receive as a 33-year-old man? Oh, I get way too... I get more than I want. I want to be ignored. That's why I liked the COVID masks. Mm -hmm. I like that too. Yeah. It helps you feel a little bit more anonymous. Mm-hmm. You feel like you get too much attention? No, but anonymity is amazing. Why do you like anonymity? An 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 <laughs> That's a good question. Probably because maybe what you had asked me earlier. I had been spending all that time as a teen, as a young adult, looking for attention. And then when it finally comes your way, it's not what you really thought it would be. It's exhausting, you know? 
people are, can be exhausting, don't you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. They could be really tiring. Uh, you know, they have their problems. You don't get a second to even talk about your problems, and then now you're left smoking a cigarette in the darkness while the rain falls. It's very poetic. No, I agree with you though. Um, yeah, a lot of attention can definitely be exhausting. I feel you on that. It would be nice to be anonymous. Uh, being anonymous and rich would be cool. Like no one knowing who you are, but having a billion dollars. You could just go oh, yeah. somewhere. You just dress in a t-shirt and jeans and no one knows that you got a billion dollars in your pocket. Yeah. How much money do you have to your name? I'm sorry? How much money do you have to your name? I don't even know. That's how anonymous I try to be. Even to myself. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Jose. You have a good rest of the night. You too. Paul from... Paul. Paul. How do we know we're alive? I have an answer. I think I have an answer. What? How do we know we're alive? I think I have an answer. Okay. Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. It, it, the mere feeling of experience necessitates that one is a lot. I don't think by virtue of being dead, you don't experience anything. At least. Well, let me tell you something about Rene Descartes. He's dead as shit. <laughs> and so nothing he... And look, when you... Here's the thing. No, people don't know this, but when you die, nothing you did while you were alive matters anymore. You're dead now. There's time... You know, look, I, he, I'm sure he was great when he was alive, but there's new people. I try to... I don't... Look... I don't, I don't really pay that much attention to history and historical figures because I just... I don't live in the past. You know? Fair. Fair. Well, well then what do you you're think dead, about the notion you're of... done. I don't like this side thing where people write books and they're like... And then you read them and it's like they're trying to tell you stuff even though they're already dead. It's like, you're dead. You Leave. There's new people right. in the world. New and, thoughts. Well, I'll totally listen to ideas. them because they know more than you do because they're still alive. So I'm sure Rene Descartes, at the time that he was living in 1495 or whatever, was smart. But he's not smart anymore. He's dead. And, and I mean, I don't even think we should read any of his books anymore because he had his ch he had his chance to tell us all the stuff he wanted to tell us. But he's dead now. It's over. He needs to learn when to throw in the towel. So what would you say your name was? Paul. Paul, I appreciate um, you bringing this to my attention. But, you know, look, try to get try to get your inspiration from someone who's alive. Because people who are alive know more than people who are dead. That's just what I believe. Well, Thank you so much for calling in, Paul. Oh, thanks, Gag. You have a good rest of the night. I love you. Love you, too. Paul from... Ben. Hello? Hey, Gag. Long-time watcher, first-time first caller. Uh, I thought a lot about your question for tonight. Good to hear so. from you. Tell me. All right. Me so, I mean... Well, so a few weeks ago, um, I was getting really high and I had this thought that one day I'm going to die and I actually don't know what's going to happen. Um, and so it made me think about this for quite a while. And finally, I came to the conclusion, Gek, that unless I know what happens after I die, I don't know if I'm dead or not. Mm. And so I guess mm. we'll go ahead. Oh, you were going to say unless if you know what happens after you die, you don't know if you're dead or not? Right, because, I mean, if, if it's nothing and I don't know anything, it's kind of like before I was born. But, like, if it's something like, oh, I go to heaven, well, then they're going to tell me when I get there, hey, you're dead. Welcome to the, you know, welcome to the afterlife. And the only thing I don't know, maybe it's reincarnation. And then you'll never know because it's an endless loop. But, yeah, it's, it's tough to think about. Um, but the biggest thing for me is it just creates this sense of, like, uncertainty and, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't have that before. 
growing, like uh, I just turned 25. And so I just started getting this feeling. Uh, and I don't know, is it normal? Do people like think about death a lot after like a certain age? What about you? Well, I think it's good to think about death because, Why? um, well, cause it gives you an appreciation for life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what did you do today? You know? Uh, I mean, like that, that's the thing. I feel like I, I wasted my day. I woke up, I had a, I had a coffee, you know, I went, yeah. went downstairs and smoked a bowl and, you know, nice. contemplated the world, watched some okay. news, but like, kind of like life is just sort of going by. And I, I look at other people's lives. You know, I saw this guy who just, you know, I mean, like everyone's life is a story, right? I saw this guy who had just gone to jail for embezzling, you know, like $400 million, you know, from, from his company. And I'm like sitting there wondering, is this like when this guy was my age, is this what he thought his life story was going to be? getting, you know, wrecked in prison because <laughs> he couldn't keep his hands off the buddy, right? Are you are you saying that you wish that you were doing something as cool as embezzling $400 million? No, absolutely not. Um, like, that's the thing. I don't know what I think would be cool because I don't think that guy probably in, like, retrospect thought that was very cool, especially now that he's in prison. Um, no, I, well, okay. I, no, when he got caught, it was probably not cool. But no, at the time, he absolutely thought it was super cool because oh. he had he at the, at the time he had four hundred million dollars, which oh, absolutely, is pretty rare. Yeah. I think. I mean, yeah, and like that's the thing is like, does it actually have consequence if we just turn it into nothing when we die? And you know, back to the the simulation that the other caller was talking about, like, I mean, sure. simulation or just turning to dust and you know being a speck in the billion year span of the universe. Does stealing 400 million, you know, made up pieces of paper really matter? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you um, think? Hmm. It seems like you're becoming aware of your own mortality, which, like I said, is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we live our lives all the time like we're not going to, you know, just fucking die. Sure. Um, but if you think every single day that you're going to fucking die, mm -hmm. um, then I, I feel like you would live your life with more intent. That's that's kind of how I feel right now. It's just the position. I, it's, it's another like ish, existential issue. It's like the position oh, of my life. Doesn't... Tell me something. Go ahead. Tell me, tell me something. If you were living your life with more intent, what would your life look like? What would you be doing every day? I would probably be like out in Central Asia, uh, driving around in like a Toyota Land Cruiser, just exploring and like meeting like local village people and doing riding horses and learning falconry How much no bullshit uh right now in cash like 10 grand in crypto about like eight well probably not as much today and then like 40k in stocks you have 40k in stocks yeah Sell some stocks. I, I hold it called psth uh it's oh, pretty yeah, awesome i mean look okay mm -hmm. so your net worth is like you know fucking... like 60k yeah you have 60k sell some fucking stock Okay. And then go. Do you have a job? Uh, it's like a work from wherever job. Oh, go to go to Central Asia. Or okay. You can, I don't know. I don't know if you can go to Central Asia right now, but go somewhere you, know, where you can go. You Just know go, what? I'll, I'll, go, I'm gonna book go the alone. ticket. I'm gonna go book alone, the ticket right go, now. Go book a hostel. Book a hostel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go alone and start talking to other people because there's gonna be other people mm -hmm. your age at the hostel yeah. and do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm gonna book the ticket right now. Thanks, Jack. Absolutely. Have a good night. You too. Call from Naomi. -o. Naomi. -o. Oh, hi. Naomi. -o. Yes. I have a question for you. Yep. How do we know? How do you know you're not dead? I don't know. Does that scare you? Um. Sometimes it scares me. Does it scare you today? Not right now. Why do you think it doesn't scare you right now? Um, I'm feeling I'm feeling optimistic today. I'm feeling happy today. Do you typically feel optimistic? Um, typically yes. Mm. What do you think? is the prime reason 
why you so often feel optimistic? Um, part of me thinks that it's just a part of my disposition, like it's maybe biological. Um, and I also just find that in general, when I am optimistic about things, then I, I'm generally happier. So it's kind of like a snowball effect, I guess. I find that interesting. You say when you're optimistic, you feel happier. Mm-hmm. Which, so, and so therefore you choose to be optimistic. I think that's really cool, to be honest with you, because a lot of the time I've looked at optimism and pessimism uh, not so much uh, uh, as a choice as you've just described, but as a you wake up and this is how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. But I, I like the intention behind all this. Oh well, thank you. I I, I wasn't aware that it was um, I don't know interpreted differently to people. Do you find it difficult to choose every day to be optimistic? Um, I don't find it difficult, but I do, I do find it, I find that when I'm having a bad day and I'm feeling sort of down and and pessimistic, it is sometimes hard to get out of that funk. Hmm. When you find yourself in this funk and you make an effort to get out of it, uh, what are you doing? What are you thinking? How do you... What action are you taking mentally to revive yourself and back into this optimistic place? Um, Something you, you say to yourself, think to yourself. Yeah, usually, for the most part, the strategy I've been using lately is if I'm having a bad day, I will just tell myself that today's a bad day and that's okay. And tomorrow's another day. And Usually the next day, things are much better. Even just having slept on it with nothing actually changing in the world. Interesting. You know, I've typically some, been, been a pessimist. Or, or no, no, not a pessimist. I've been, skept, I've been skeptical of affirmations. Mm-hmm. But this sounds like a good one. Because uh, it's a long-term strategy here Mm -hmm. you know you if you accept that today it's just in in your day but the next one might be you're playing a long game and the only games you should ever play should be long games so i like this i like this thank you for sharing this yeah of course thank you for everything you do and for your um therapy gecko i i enjoy it thank you for your naomi Mm -hmm. you have a good rest of the night yeah, you too. Call from Leif. L, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Canada. Canada. Um, How Marty. are things going up there? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice. Like things are opening up and we can go out. And I don't know. It's been like a hard year, you know. Where you been going? Uh, I've been studying mostly and chilling, you know. Uh, you've been studying and chilling. Yeah, like uh, that's how my year been. And I found out about you like yesterday, and man, I gotta say you're pretty cool, man. Really? Can you? Uh, uh, you know, it's weird because you've only known well, you've known about me for only a day, and you're saying I'm really cool. Yeah. But at the yeah, end of the day, but it's, uh, I feel like is a day. You know, I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is like. Is a day long enough? Have I? Do you feel like I've provided you enough information? Maybe not me directly, but I guess my whatever social media online presence has provided you enough information only in that one day for you to make the judgment that I am cool. Like to be honest, uh, like in my. Uh, mother country like we don't have people like you like doing this type of thing like so when I saw you 
<laughs> you're, sa you're, sa it's, you're saying that like this is just a normal thing in America is people doing this. This is m multiple people. I like, I have no idea. Like, this is something really new, you know? Interesting. Interesting. I like, I like the fact that, um, well, how recently you're, you're saying, have you, I mean, are you new to your, your mother? When did you leave your mother country? Uh, like seven months ago, I came to Canada to have my college degree. Okay. All right. So you're actually, all right. So it sounds like, you know, I'm in a position right now where I could take advantage of your lack of American culture. And I could just tell you that be dressing up as geckos is, is, is just a nat it's just something that we do come every, um, you know, June 21st in America. I could convince you of that. And you would just believe me. Because I, you know, no. I think I'm cool, apparently, and um, you don't have prior knowledge to compete with. So I could, no. just, I could just tell you that, and you would take it at face value, it seems. It's not like, I don't know anything about the American culture, like, I've seen, I know a lot of things, but something like this, this is the first time, like, you know. Where, where is your mother country? I'm African, actually. I'm from North Africa. Nice, nice. And uh, what made you want to come to Canada? Like, the universities are good here, or better than European universities, you know. And, and Canada really, really chill, you know. Mm, yes. Yes, I have got I have gotten that sense from Canada. All the Canadian, every Canadian that's called into the show sounds sounds very, very Canadian. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Couldn't explain it if I wanted to. Where do you What do you study? I'm studying computer science. Okay. What do you What do you want to uh, be when you grow up? Like uh, I don't know, maybe. I'm not sure about that. Like, I haven't chosen the specialty yet, but I want to be an electrical engineer, you know? Electrical engineer? Yeah. Interesting. But th this is the problem. This is why I want to talk to you, because this is not this... what I want. This is what my parents want, you know? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Do you have something that you do want to do? Yeah, I want to play soccer, man. I, like that was my dream, like since I've been, I don't know, three, four years old. You want to play soccer, you know? Yeah, I want to. Um, be... You want to, When you say you want to play, when you say you want to play soccer, do you mean you want to? Like, you want to be a professional? I don't know. How, I don't know how the fucking leagues work or anything, but you want to be a professional player. Yeah, I want to be a professional player. You know? Interesting. But, uh, how does one? Like, how do you do that? I don't know anything about soccer. I don't watch it. I'm not in the FC league or the twenty or the LC league or whatever it is. How do you? Yeah, what is the path to doing that? Even like this is something something that I noticed here in America. Like people don't know anything about like soccer, and it's huge in Africa and Europe. It's something that. You see, everybody watches soccer. Everybody plays soccer. Everybody loves. No, we know like every player from every nationality, from every country, from every team. You know. And yet we got you to call it soccer. Yeah, that's the problem. Like for seven months, like everybody like been. When I say soccer, they uh, when I say football, they be like, no, it's not football. It's soccer. Mm -hmm. That's really dumb, man. But, uh, but you they can't play argue. soccer. It's you know, it's whenever people tell me that like they have a thing that they want to do, I always tell them that they should like make content on the internet because um, I, I believe that that's a way, like a path to being able to do a lot of things. Uh, now, soccer, becoming a soccer player, seems very difficult. Although I don't know if, if soccer's so popular that like you could make a living. In like a minor league, I don't know. I don't know what the legit, what the practical process is of doing that. Um, like I'll send them number. Like 
uh, there is a big football player that I personally love. He's my favorite. His name is Cristiano Ronaldo. On his sure. only on Instagram, like he made in 2020, he made 47 million dollars only from Instagram without without the soccer, without the companies, without anything. You sure? Well, because yeah, what like, I was gonna say is, I mean, what I would do. Is you know, uh, uh, if you can't become a soccer player, if the world of soccer is big enough, you could m- make soccer-related content on you know TikTok or fucking Twitch or something like that, and try to build yeah. something off of there. Yeah, like I had this idea, and it's like been buzzing in my mind for the past while, you know. Oh, okay. Like well, I should. What's the, what's, what's the what's what's the idea here? Like I want to make videos of me like doing tricks. I don't know and teach people that don't know how to play soccer how, like the basics and things. You know. What did you say? Because your name of was? Life, I like sharing with people. You know. What did you say your name was? Uh, Leif. Leif, I love it. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think that's wonderful. I I'm dead serious with you right now. I think you should make tic, you should learn how to make TikToks. Go watch, I don't know if you're on TikTok, but watch some of that shit. Learn how to get your lighting right and make your fucking uh uh soccer videos. I think that's a great idea. You know, look, you might find you might find you might you could even like here's the thing, man, is like with the internet y- you could build up a, a tiny little audience. And really? something could happen, you know. Like I, I don't, I don't think that that's unrealistic anymore. You trying to be fucking the next Chris, 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 uh, whatever Ronaldo. Yeah. Unrealistic. <laughs> well, we'll be honest. But building up an audience on the internet for soccer content, achievable, in my opinion. I would, yeah. I, I think you should do that, man. I think you should make some TikToks. I think, um, I think you should go for it. And also, it's not like you have to fucking drop out of school and spend 12 hours a day doing it. It's like, you know, you have a few hours here, a few hours there. You work on the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a great idea. If I drop, if I drop out of school, my father would, like, shoot me, you know? Well, you don't have to drop out of school to do it. I, I you, you have, for whatever it's worth, the gecko guy thinks you should do it. I think, uh... Uh, definitely, definitely give it a try. Yeah, that's really, like, thank you, man, for For sure. This, and here's another thing. Is, look, another, another thing is, sure, there might be a lot. Here's thing, and this is going to sound cheesy. This is going to sound cheesy, but I, I I, believe in it. I really do. There's a lot of people out there that make soccer content, which is true. There's a lot of people out there that make soccer content. And again, going to sound cheesy. Get ready for some cheese. But there is only one you, Leaf. So people are gonna want to come to see you specifically. So you know, make sure you you're yourself in these videos, not trying to be like all the other people out there making soccer content. Yeah, that's that, this is one of the best advices I've got. Like, especially with no one to talk to, you know. Hell yeah, man! Look. Power to you. Do you have any of these accounts already? Like, do you have an Instagram? Do you have a thing? Uh, I have you, Leaf. But, you know, I tried, like, streaming once. I was playing Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty Warzone. I tried streaming, but a lot of people were really mean and shit. That's why. Uh, people are, <laughs> I, people are, I'm not reading the chat, but I'm sure people are being mean to me right now. I've had hundreds yeah. and hundreds of comments I'm sure telling me to kill myself over the past hour. But I'm going strong, baby. You can too. <laughs> like that's really true, man. People can be dicks sometimes. Do it up big. Don't let the people be in di- look. Go for it, dude. How old are you by the way? I'm um, twenty one. Oh god, go do it. Go make go make soccer TikToks or football TikToks. <laughs> I believe in you, Leaf. Yo, thank you for uh, thank you for calling in, man, and sharing. You have a good rest of the night. Thank you, man. You're the best. <laughs> of course, of course. You take care, Leaf. Bye bye. Call from Modi. Modi. Uh, hello. Hey. 
How are you? How are you? Um, you want the fake answer? Mm, sure. Managing. To, uh, to, or is that to imply that the real answer is that you are not managing? Yeah, I'd say so. What what is there what is there to manage? Uh, I guess uh, expectation. Expectations of what? Uh, expectations for myself. Expectations from my family. There's a hair in here. What does your Drink family it. expect uh, from you? Uh, they want me to follow like the traditionalist model. You know, they want me to be successful, wife, kids, house, money. It seems like money is yeah, all the fingers get in there. It seems like money is like the only the only way to measure my success. There's two hairs in here. How much money do your parents want you to have? Well, um, my grandparents were, my grandfather owned an insurance company. So his kids didn't meet up to the expectation. And I feel like they're, they just want me to be what they didn't get to be. Well, what do you want to be? Uh, to be honest, I really want to be an an actor or uh, something and something to do with film. Film was always my escape when I was a kid. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you all. I'm telling you what I told Leaf. I'm telling everyone listening to this because I've seen it happen 8,000 times. It happened to me personally, it happened to my friends, and it happened to people, I see it all the time. I am telling you, if you wanna be an actor, if you wanna make soccer content, if you wanna do the, make a, tic, make a TikTok account. Make a TikTok account and make TikToks. That's, what, that's your number one, way. the number, I, the guarantee fastest way that you will be able to make a living being an actor. You'll be able to eke out $30,000 a year being an actor is with TikTok. You should make TikToks. That's my, that's my, practi that's my practical, actionable advice to you. Um, to, be, to be honest, I, bought, uh, I went out and I got a microphone nice. because uh, I, I figured that I'd start voice acting. This, nice. When I was a kid, I, I was like in all this acting crap and... You know the little little classes and groups and whatnot. And then when I was a little older, we moved cross country to from California to Florida, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff went away. But uh, mm -hmm. there was this when my dad was younger. He he had this shot to be a comedian, and he got scared. And when I was a kid, he naysayed me out of it made me feel like you know people are going to see you and they're going to be you know they're, they're going to they're going to put you down that's that's all your life is going to be is people putting you down and so since then i've just had <laughs> i've called i've called right, but your dad, like here's the thing let me tell you something about that your dad your dad grew up in a different time than you grew up because you grew up in the time of the internet and in the time of the internet this is by the way this is the one thing that i'm the most of any like advicey thing and i don't give advice on a lot of different subjects this is the one thing i'm very passionate about your dad grew up in a time where to be an at to be a comedian your dad grew up in a time where to be a comedian the only way was there was one fucking old ass dude who worked at the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and if that dude didn't like you, you're fucked. That's yeah. that's when that's when your dad grew. Your dad grew up if the one fucking seventy year old white guy that worked at fucking Johnny Carson d doesn't like him, then you're screwed. Now where the where you where you now the the universe that you live in is you could have. You could you could put a video of yourself doing a monologue in front of a million people, and if every single one of them fucking hates you except for a thousand, 
You you can have a, a fantastic career. That's the world that you live in. So take advantage of that world, okay? Because your grand, your your the world that your dad grew up in is gone. P- comedians go on the Tonight Show, and no one hears you. You can build your audience for your thing on the computer. Take advantage of that, okay? Is that uh, does that make sense? It does. Take advantage of that, because it's new. I mean, it's not even like. It's like two years old, but it's it's the world you live in. So you know, take 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 advantage of that. You know, I I really don't have a choice but to to go at it now. Really, you got damn right. What'd you say your name was? Modi. Modi, I look forward to seeing you on the for you page. I'll see you seeing me. Later, dude. Later. Call from... Ellie. Ellie! Hi! Hey! What's going on? I'm a gecko on the computer. Yeah, um... That's What great. are you? I'm, um, I'm just driving home from my friend's house and I thought, hey, let me just call let me just call the therapy gecko and here I am. Well, how do you know this friend? How do I know this friend? Um, I I I don't really know. I um I did um trivia at this uh, local bar in town when I first moved here and um I met another guy, and he's friends with this guy. And it's been a few years now, but um, I guess we got to know each other that way. It's been a That's few years. That's cool. Uh, yeah. How old are you? Um, it's not very nice to ask a lady that, but I'm 29. You're 29. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I find it interesting because, you know, I hear all the time people say that they have a hard time um, fi- making friends as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I found I, I've had a hard time making like, I mean, I have friends and I'm grateful for my friends. But, yeah, I do really feel like it, I I don't find it easy to make more. friends. Well, you made a friend in a pretty uh, well, you went out to a bar and you just made a friend and, and you've been friends for a few years. That's pretty yeah, good. it is. It is. Thank you for that perspective. Um, do you, do you wish to make more friends? Are you happy with the amount of friends that you have? Um, I, I wish to make more friends. Um, I feel like I don't get out enough. Like, I feel like I'm starting to try to get out more. Like tonight I just decided, okay, I'm gonna, I wanted to make food and this friend was willing to sample my cooking. And so... I just went out and did it. But it's been a while since I've done something like this. When did you move to this place? <laughs> it's been four years. Four years. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's did been a while. Did you know anyone before you moved here? Um, I did, kind of. Like, this was my college town. And and then I, like, left for a few years, and I came back for work. So I kind of knew people because I went to college here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you want to make more friends. Will you be my friend? Me being your friend... Well, here's, there's a couple things with that. Me being your friend wouldn't be super useful to you because okay. I doubt that I live in the same area um, that mm. you live. Okay. Also, you're putting me on the spot a little bit here because, you know, uh, look, we've been on the phone for like three minutes now. I feel like not that my like first impression of you and I try not to have impressions. All right. I try not to make judgments unless if I have what I feel to be sufficient amount of information to make them. But, um, Uh you know, in the three minutes I've known you, I don't feel like it's been long enough for me to really determine whether or not 
I, I, I would be your friend. And I, and look, you to me as well. You know, I could be a far more heinous of a person than I've given off in this three-minute uh-huh. phone call. And w- possibly, uh, if I gave you more information about myself as a person, you might find that whatever impression of me that I've given you that made you want me to be your friend is now gone and replaced with something far worse causing you to not want to be my friend. So for that reason, I think that as of this very moment, I don't know if it'd be a good idea for us to be friends. Okay. I I respect that. Thank you. Of course. What did you say your name was? Mm -hmm. Ellie. Ellie. Ellie, let's uh, look before we go. I want I want to come up with let's let's get an actionable thing here. What's something you can do to make more friends? What's something I can do to make more friends? Yeah. Um, I can probably just you know I spend a lot of time in my house, and I think one um, one thing that I can do um, is just get out of my house more. I like that for you, I like that for yeah. you. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Well, you're in the car, aren't you? I am. Bingo! You're working on it. You're already there. I like it. Thank you, Ellie. Thank Thank you you so much for calling in. Well, thank you. You take care. All right, you too. Bye. She's already out of the house. Bam. Done. On to the next item of the to-do list. Call from... Ultra laser. Two. Ultra laser? Yeah. How did you come to be how did you become ultra laser? How did I become ultra laser? Um, I don't know. I thought that the Portamon 2 of Ultra and Laser was a really cool combination. Hmm. Are you afraid to use your real name, or is this your real name? Well, I mean, my name is Rich. I'm not afraid to use my real name. So how come you didn't use it? Well, I didn't know what this was. Is it possible that through calling into my stream, you saw an opportunity to assume an identity that was not yours, therefore escaping... The identity of Rich. Into you got a me. Fresh persona. That is not playing sure the problems me. of the old one. Absolutely. What are you escaping from? Tell me about the problems. Well, I don't know about that now. I can't really pour my heart out onto a stream. However, mm. things are dark for sure. You gotta light them up with the lasers. Light them up with the lasers. You ever thought about that? No. I like this. I feel like this is an independent film. You're... Oh? You know, a guy who's experienced some trauma in your life. And you have... I feel like I've seen this in a lot of movies. You're a guy who's experienced some trauma in, in, in their life. And uh, you have an alternative reality. You know, a bridge to Terabithia. Um, the whatever that fucking movie with Steve Carell. You have this sort of alternative right. reality to escape into. Um, to prevent yourself from feeling the feelings you don't want to feel. What I think you should do is make Ultra Laser into a three-part trilogy film series. And sell the rights to Sony for enough money to retire. And then you could truly escape your trauma by moving halfway across the world to like an island or something where you won't have to talk to anyone ever again and you can just drink stout beers. Mmm. Delicious. Well, thank you, Gecko. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ultra Lazy. You have a good night. You too. Call from Emily. Emily. Hello? Hi. Emily, how, who, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm I'm folding laundry while I watch the stream. And it's, have we ever spoken before, Emily? We have. We have. Um, 
yeah, I'm actually going to see you soon. Ah, uh, yes, this is the Emily from uh, from Portland, who I'm visiting on my uh, Gak Across America journey. Yes, um, yeah, yes. And we have spoken before, I think I've called in before on your Tuesday night sure. stream. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, Emily, you know, before... Uh, is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about and you wanted to cover? No, well, I... I called my friend Neil actually earlier, right before your stream, to ask sure. him to watch, to co-watch with me. And so I hope he's listening right now because I was like, "Mark, mark my words, I'm going to get on tonight." And 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 then I and then I did. So so that's nice. But I also was thinking a lot about death tonight because of the stream. And I was thinking, why I know I'm not dead is because I don't know. I'm folding laundry and drinking wine and eating pasta. And I feel like that would be a really weird ghostly haunt or like simulation to be in. So well, you're assuming well you're assuming that um you're assuming that the pasta you're eating and the laundry you're folding and the wine that you're drinking is not also of the ghost world. And that you are not able to interact with it because you yourself are a ghost. So here's the thing, if you're dead and you're a ghost, the pasta that you're eating, the wine you're drinking and the mm-hmm. you're folding are of the ghostly world, and that's why you can interact with them. So it's not a guarantee. I don't think that those activities are are, are evidence enough that you are not dead. But I will say, that's Emily, true. I think it is good that you are thinking about those thing, these things, because a lot of people they live their lives, um, not even stopping to think whether or not they are ghosts. So I commend right. you on putting in that effort in the first place. It's. Thank you. I, it's funny because when when I saw the theme for tonight, actually, I put on one of my like linen dresses because I was like, if I'm going to like have a ghosty night of folding laundry and drinking wine and eating pasta, I might as well like really lean into the part and listen to this um, stream about being a ghost. So I could be a ghost. And if so, I think I think I'm OK with that. I think I'd be at peace. This is kind of a nice ghostly haunting activity. Especially talking of course. to you. So. Of course, of course, Emily, I'm so glad to hear that not only have you thought about this, but you've accepted um, the multiple possible realities, which mm-hmm. will open you up to greater happiness because no matter what happens, you're fine. Exactly. And, and you know, yes, I appreciate that, Gek. Of course, Emily. I'm, I'm so happy I got to speak with you and I'm um, excited to, to come see you in Portland as part of my Gek Across America documentary. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see you. Maybe we can ghost around together, you know? Haunt some people. Well, well I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm not a ghost. Oh, you're not? Okay. So then, so you're a, like, how do you speak? I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know how far we could go with this, but the fact that you can speak to a ghost, me, maybe. It's pretty impressive. Cool. You, have, you have quite the set of skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. Have, uh, you, have, you have a, a good night. The night. Take care. You too. Bye. Call from Becky. Hello? Hello? Is this a therapy gecko? Is this Talking Tom? No, this is not Talking Tom. This is Becky. Becky. How you doing, Becky? I'm doing good. I just opened up my Reddit page to go to the subreddit, like the DMV subreddit, because I'm a DMV professional. And uh, I uh, came d- across d- uh, Dragon Ball Z? DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. Oh, okay. You're right a D- here I, didn't know that there were, I didn't know that there was a DMV subreddit. You'd be surprised, Gecko. Hmm. Well, I mean, what do they talk about on there? They talk about how we waste everyone's flipping time, and we just stare at them, and we hate our lives. Honestly, the reason why I'm calling in is because lately I've been calling into those pastors on the TV, and they, you know, try to give me guidance. But uh, I called into the Joel Osteen guy, and even he told me to give up on my dreams. So really, I'm lost in life. So I'm I'm sort of the second uh, opinion yeah. after Joel Olstein. Joel, who is it? Joel Olstein. Yes, yes, he's 
he's the pastor. He's a he's a really smart, handsome, godly man on the television. Got it, got it. Okay, so he told you to give up on your dreams. What are your dream? What What did you say your name was again, Becky? Becky, what are your dreams? Becky. Becky. And what are your dreams, Becky? My dreams are to someday have a bunch of horses. I think I'm a horsey girl, but I always grew up in the city. But I just moved out here to Napa, California, and. I'm just ready to start my dreams, but I only have a California DMV salary. Mm. Well, now, tell me, before I give you the second opinion, I'd like to hear the first. Why did Joel, uh, why did Pastor Joel tell you to give up on your dreams? Well, honestly, I don't think he was giving me the lot of day. I'm used to man just, you know, passing me by. So what? I mean, what did he tell you? Why did he did he say it was unrealistic financially? Did he say that God hates horse people? What was his reasoning? He just told me that I'm what's what's known as a basket case, and it wasn't it wasn't worth my money. Like it kind of hurt me a lot. Mm. It wasn't worth your money. Does Joel? Do you have to pay to talk to Joel? Two hundred dollars for. T- for 10 minutes with Mr. Joel, with a handsome Joel Osteen. Does that money go directly to God, or does it fund his uh, car payments? Well, I'm pretty sure it funds God's ambitions. Okay. Do you do you believe that God... Well, okay, if you could talk directly to God... Yeah. Do you, what, do you think, what do you think he would tell you? He would tell me to... Well... This is kind of personal, but, you know, he probably would have told me that I shouldn't have lost my husband. Mm-hmm. That you shouldn't have lost your husband? No. Well, isn't, well, I mean, look, other people... Oh, off them. O-F-F-E-D, off them. Oh, off them. Yeah. Okay. So you you murdered your husband. Allegedly. Oh, that, well, we'll say that conversation for another day. You ain't a cop, are you? No, I'm a gecko. Oh. Well, I see you on the TV. You could be insurance salesman and all sorts of things. You, you should never give up on your dreams. You know what? Look. Let me tell you something, Becky, to really wrap this up here. What did you yeah. just tell me? You told me I should never give up on my dreams. At Absolutely. the end of the day, Becky, Becky, at the end of the day, and I'm kind of learning this myself here. At the end of the day, you have to be your own you have to be your own cheerleader, okay? Yeah. Let, okay, look, if if God or Joel Cock and Balls or me <laughs> aren't going to tell you to follow your dreams, Tell yourself that. What you just told me, be your own cheerleader, Becky. You, If you believe that I can follow my dreams, you believe yeah. that you can follow yours. So be your own cheerleader. Continue to uh, support yeah. yourself as you follow your horsey dream. And oh, thank um, you. Don't, don't rely on anyone else for validation. All right. Um, so where do I send the $200? Because this is way better than Joel Osteen. Hmm. Uh, you can Venmo me at L Dresher. Oh, nice, nice. All right, well, I'm going to let this therapy gecko get back to his ways, but I appreciate the community service that you're doing, sir. Of course, of course, Becky. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful rest of the night. All right, and you as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wait, it's $300. Call from... To accept, press 1. To send... Mystery caller, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm mean, just. I'm just kind of vibing right now. You're vibing. Yeah, a little bit. What the hell does that mean? Um. I'm. I'm just. I'm just. Uh. I don't know. I'm just kind of like. I was, I was just, I'm, I just am right now. Uh, I don't know. I was just, dude, I was just 
being and then I saw your phone number and I called and I didn't think it was gonna actually pick up but here I am mm. by the way I have news for you I know you were saying that you were being but at no point have you stopped being since no, the I've time not. in which you were referring to yourself being no I've, you still I've, are yeah, I've, actually that yeah. kind of brings us a bit to the question here do you believe that you are I believe that I am. Nice. As much as, as much as I can, you know. So you called in, and you didn't expect to get on. What did you expect? Um. Well, I remember a while ago. I uh, I don't remember how long, but uh, I tried to call, and uh, it was it was busy. Uh, this would have been probably over a month ago, and then. Uh, and so I wouldn't. I was. I thought maybe. Well, you probably get a lot of calls, so I wouldn't be shocked if the line was busy again. But um, it wasn't. So I guess now here I am, which is pretty. You neat. know, I tell everyone I get a lot of calls. This is true, but I'm going to answer. You know, one. I'm. I'm going to answer someone. You know, so right. the, the chance. Here's the thing. The chance that I'm going to answer a call, it's a hundred percent. So when you think yeah. of it like that, it's now. You know, it's it's not that crazy that you got in. Yeah, it's actually, it's really cool. Yeah, I like the, the way you think. It's really cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so, um, I'm not, I'm no, uh, does it, so, hmm, I don't, I don't really know what to, to ask or to talk about right now. That's totally fine. So, so what? I don't know. Just, just I guess vibing. just like, yeah, yeah. So what about you? Do you believe that you are? Um. You know, I try to believe and have opinions on as few things as I possibly can um, being a citizen of Earth. Uh, So I abstain partially from a belief as to whether or not I am. It's very interesting. Is there a reason behind trying to hold very few beliefs? Is that like, like, like what what purpose does that serve to you? Very interesting. Uh, it serves me a purpose of well. Here's the thing: every single day, every single moment. I mean, even as I'm talking to you right now, as I'm talking to everyone, even as I'm browsing the internet, as I'm looking around, as I go on a walk in the woods, you know, as I take a shit, as I talk to my dad on the phone, as I eat a sandwich, I'm I'm constantly at every single. I mean, as I'm dreaming. Dude, you know, constantly, at every single moment, every day, being presented with new information um, about the world. And um, I, I'm interested in being, uh, you know, open to that information. Uh, you know, uh, as, as, as widely as possible. So I try not to, um, you know, make beliefs about... I try not to assert firm beliefs as to whether or not I exist because every day I'm getting presented with new information that uh, could change that belief. So I, I, I set nothing in stone. Interesting. So do you think then that, because I kind of have almost uh, like a, sim- a similar, like I try to make myself open to the, the different like information that exists in the world, but instead of holding trying to hold few beliefs i i think i end up holding many different beliefs as much as i can and then constantly trying to challenge them and so as much as i may firmly believe in something i'm equally ready to change that belief into believing in something else you know i think that's smart Well, let me ask you something here. You you said to me that you believe that you exist, correct? Yeah. 
Now, and he, and this is how I operate. You know, I do, I do have beliefs. Some of my beliefs, I'm more open to challenging than others. And I'm curious for you, your belief that you exist. How open are right. you to challenging that? Hmm. You know, I actually, I very much challenge that uh, because I believe I, as much as I can firmly believe, because you know that um, I don't know who said it, but uh, very famously someone said, "I think, therefore I am," and that effectively is saying, "Well, there is something that is producing the thoughts in my brain, and that must exist, right?" But I mean, we really don't know where it all comes from. Like, as much as we can try and, like, describe, like, how our brains work and how thought happens, we really don't know necessarily where where thought and where our own, like, sentience necessarily exists from or exists because of. So, um, I don't necessarily know that I exist. I can only believe that I exist in the way that that person described it. I think therefore I am. So something is producing what I describe as my own thoughts, or at least that's what I would be led to believe. But I think that maybe it doesn't necessarily even matter whether I do or do not exist because either way I treat existence in the same way. I still act and speak and live my same life, whether or not I believe I exist or not. So I don't necessarily give too much thought into it a lot of the times just because it doesn't make a big difference. But if you really want to get down into it, uh, that's a belief that I hold firmly that yes, I do believe I exist, but also it's equally something that is difficult to challenge. And because of that, it's something I have to hold with a very large grain of salt because if I believe that I exist, I don't necessarily know that what that existence really is, you know? Absolutely. What did you say your name was? Uh, my name is Trevor. Sorry, I didn't quite get that in at the beginning of the call. It was a pleasure talking to you, Trevor. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the night. Yeah, you too. Thanks for hearing me out, you know? Of course. You take Keep care. Vibing. Call from... <laughs> to accept, press 1. To send a... Hello? Hello, Mr. Gecko. How are you? Hey, I've just been watching your uh, channel for a while with some of my friends here, and uh, my friend Robbie, he likes you a lot. Uh, I've I've never seen your Twitch. I don't even have a Twitch, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm just happy to be here. And I would like here. to, yeah, uh, I would just like to talk like a little about really anything. Um, some of these phone calls have been a little bit frustrating. I don't know for you, but for as a viewer, it's been a little bit rough. So um, I don't know. Let's try to spice things up a bit. Well, 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 Tom. What's your name? Well, tell me. Um, tell me why? Why have these phone calls been uh, frustrating for you? Oh my God! I just can't believe there's just many brain dead people in the world. People like to flap their lips and they just speak, but there's no substance that comes out of it. Sure. I'm not. Sure. I'm not saying that I know everything about everything, but it, people just like to talk, which essentially is why I'm here as well. But um, if there's any questions that you'd like to ask aside from the, how do you know you're not dead? Cause I just, I don't have anything good for that. Other than the fact that I'm fucking miserable, like all day, like there's pain. If existence is pain, then we exist. We're alive. That's the end of that question. So you are oh, okay. So not only did you say that the calls have been frustrating for you, but you sense that and I'm not saying that they are. I'm not. I'm not confirming this sense in any way, shape, of or course. form. But you right. sense that they're frustrating for me. A Why minute. Do you sense yeah. That? I just again, people just like to talk, and your show is meant for this very purpose. 
um, I mean, one caller just called you to talk about doing her laundry. I mean, I could call my, I could call my fucking mom and talk to her about that. People don't want to hear that, you know. You want to get some, you want to get some calls with a little bit of sustenance, you know. Drinking wine and folding laundry, that's cute, but call your boyfriend, call your mom, call your cousin about it. Don't call your show, right? You're the therapy gecko. You don't have time for this. Well, well, uh, so I ask you then, and I'm curious because you say that your friend uh, is familiar with my stream, but you are not. Um, right. I mean, when you say, you know, let's get so that when you, you're talking about how you, you think I should have calls with more sustenance, what, how would you define sustenance? Spice, let's, as well, you refer to it as. Sure, let's talk about exi- well, talk about existence, talk about anything. I don't know, like, if you've ever listened to uh, Howard Stern, he'll just hang up on calls that, you know, like, you can tell early on when a call isn't going anywhere. Folding laundry is one of those calls, you know? And for you, I'm sure it's a little bit, like, you don't know. You're trying to give the benefit of the doubt to the caller because they've made it into the show. I get that. I'm just saying... For us, we've just been trying, I don't know, I've been trying to get onto your show, I don't know what I would say, but that's where I've landed on while listening to this woman fold her clothes and talk about essentially nothing. Well, so, so, you're attacking the sustenance. I mean, uh, but still, okay, so here's here's my thing, though. I could you be wrong, call, it's just my opinion, well, I don't, well, no, well, yeah. Here's my thing, here's my thing, though, is you have... Stated examples of what you think does not constitute a, uh, a s- sub- substanceful conversation. But I feel like I've yet to get from you an example of something that, in your opinion, would. I've only gotten the what would not, not an example of, you know, something that you find that you would think would be interesting. True. And the question at hand as well, I don't have a good answer for. The Do we exist? Do we not exist? Forget you could the ramble on. Here. The, the question yeah, okay. is not that important. All that matters is Agreed. You know, we're two people talking on the phone. Agreed. Yeah. All I can tell you is I'm really drunk with my friends who, my friend Robbie that loves you. And we've just been firing off phone calls just trying to get in. I didn't think I would get in, but here I am today. And uh, yeah, he's he's got a shit eating grin over there in the corner. He's they're dead silent. Like sure. you could hear a pin drop in this place. You know, there sure. everything's all very tense here. Let me ask you something. You are are you know doing a lot of judging. You, I think you'd agree. Yeah, you're and I'm drunk, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Sure, but you're doing a lot of judging here. Do you now? You, I mean, you have to assume. That, you know, uh, you were watching the other callers, you were judging them based on your own uh, uh, criteria of what is substantial. Do you, and you, right now, are being judged by other people? Yeah, I'm aware. (laughs) If you're substantial, how do you feel about that? How do you feel being judged by others the way that you have been judging others? I think it's just the dog eat dog world, man. You get judged every day. Right now, I'm just on the platform, so you got to understand that you're whether or not you want to be judged, it's going to happen anyway, right? And you can try to be the good Christian boy and just be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to judge people by how they speak or what I think of them on the surface, but it's going to happen regardless. So the best way to go about doing things is to just do it as if you are going to be judged regardless. And you'll, I think you'd live a more fulfilling life that way. I, by the way, I think that's great. I really do. I think it's good to live in a way that uh, you're impervious to the judgments of others. However, you know, I, I think in hand, to aid that goal, I think it would be helpful for you to judge other people less. Because the more judgmental you are of other people, the more judgmental you're going to be of yourself, the more sustainable to other people's judgment of you you're going to be. Would you not agree with that? I think you're correct. Um, Where I think there could be improvement is constructive criticism. While I could be very judgmental, I think it's still good to know that if you are a viewer or if you are a therapy gecko, 
you would want to know where the where the other side of the coin is, right? I'm not telling you that I'm folding my laundry. In fact, I'm doing less than that woman is right now. I'm just sitting on my couch watching your stream, right? So I'm being less productive than she is. However, as a listener, that was a little bit frustrating. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more people, not even not even saying myself. I just feel like there's a lot more people out there that have that have very interesting things to say. I can't say that I'm one of them, but I would, now you said I would you were miserable. like to think. Yeah. Uh, 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 why are you miserable? Life is miserable, right? There's ups, there's peaks, there's valleys, there's everyday conflict. But if you know that you are miserable then ex existence existence is difficult, right? It's a constant struggle. So if you're miserable, you know that you're alive. Because the, the end is nothing. There's nothing there. There's, there is no fucking... And this is... All right, they're laughing already in the other room. This isn't a, this isn't a doom and gloom. It's just a... There's nothing at the end of the road, right? You just... You go to sleep, you go away. Sleep sure. is the reward, right? Sure. So if you're miserable, you're struggling... Which is life. That is life. Life is a struggle. That's how you know you're existing. That's how you know you're living. You know, it's funny. Um, I feel like in the call previously, I was just talking about not having so many set in stone beliefs because life is always giving me, you know, new information. And I feel like, again, you know, look, I'm not a real therapist. You know that. But I feel like you've got a this this big heavy bag of beliefs about the world and about your life and about all these different things. And they're 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 kind of pessimistic. No, and well they might I mean... be weighing you down a little bit here. Well, honestly, death is the reward at the end of the road. That's the truth of it, right? I'm not like I say I'm miserable, right? Cuz living is misery. But I'm not I'm I mean, not going to right there. End living it. is that right there. Living is misery. You said but that. But then you get these the way, sprinkles. By the it's way, true. hold on. Listen, you said that you said that, yes, you exactly right now you said it's true. You are convinced living is misery. That is one of those believe I was just talking to the other caller. What uh, what beliefs are you more open to challenging here? You, you, that, that does not come off to me as one of the beliefs that you're willing to challenge. And I look, again, I don't know you, man, but I would maybe, and maybe this is, you know, easier uh, uh, done, easier said than done, but leave that belief that life is misery open to a little bit of challenging. Okay. I'll take that to heart. Good. What'd you say her name was? Uh, you Calvin. Screamed, you screamed. Yeah. Calvin. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to get on, so sorry about that. It's okay. Well, thank you so much for calling, Calvin. You have a good rest of the night. I appreciate it, Gecko. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.